Hey family, welcome to the Rock Church London, welcome to our YouTube page. Um, thank you for tuning in today. Um, today's message is, is entitled Mountains and Miracles and I'm praying that through the message today that you'll be able to understand what God is doing through your life and through the life of me, pe people around in the Bible in terms of being able to move mountains and be able to perform miracles because that's what God does. He moves mountains and perform, performs miracles in our life. So why don't you lean in, be part of our, our, our worship experience and hopefully you're blessed by this message. God bless you. All right, yo. I want to preach a message today that I'm going to use the book of Zechariah as my uh, base text. And um, once we read the text, then I'm going to give you the sermon title. All right, that's almost my sermon title. But, hey. Well, some of you guys know the sermon title already, right? Because we've been talking about it for about two weeks and we haven't been able to preach it. Amen. All right. Uh, I'm going to go into Zechariah chapter 4. And because of time, rather than taking from verse 1, we're going to take it from verse 6. Is that all right? From verse 6 to 10. Originally, I asked the team to put off from verse 1 to 14, but time fails us, so we're going to take it from verse 6. Is that all right? Yeah. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Yeah. Not by might, not by power, yeah. but by my spirit, spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Yeah. Amen. What are you, mighty mountains? <laughs> All right, I want to I wanna say that again. I think that sounds so good. Yeah. What are you, mighty mountains? Yeah. Imagine that. It's asking a mighty mountain, what are you? But anyway, before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not airing any feedback. I'm not airing anything. Before Zerubbabel, because you guys don't know what Zerubbabel is, right? That's why. All right, so I'm going to go, I'm going to talk about this, this amazing man in a moment. All right, but just, just, just trust me for a moment and just say amen after I read this to you, okay? Okay? Before Zerubbabel, yeah. <laughs> before me and my family, yeah. Yeah. you will become yeah. level ground. Yes. All right? Yes. I don't know how many of you need that prayer in your life right now. You've got some mountains yeah. in your life, man. Before Zerubbabel, before me, before my family, before this church, yes. before everyone under the sound of my voice, yes. you, mountain, will become level ground. Yes. Come on, somebody. Then he will bring out the capstone. Yes. All right, the capstone is what covers the mountain. He yes. will bring out the capstones to shouts of God bless it. God bless it. Then the word of the Lord came to me. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands will also complete it. Some of you have started something. You, you trusted God. You start walking with God on an assignment, on a journey. But you are not certain whether you can finish it because you have some obstacles in your way. All right? But as the song says, now that the rains have gone, I can see all obstacles in my way. Mm. Yes. And if you can see it, you can be like that MC back in the days. If you can see it, now you can now deal with the matter. And when you deal with the matter, you've got to deal with it proper. Come on, somebody. All right. All right. All right. Hey. If as we complete it, then you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. Verse 10. Who dares despise the days of small things, since the seven eyes of the Lord that range throughout the earth will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone in the hand of Zerubbabel. And we say amen. Amen. If you want more context, you can read that old chapter yourself. That's Ze Zechariah chapter 4. You can read it yourself. But we're going to go into the word today. Amen. My assignment for today, well, my assignment for last week, uh, which is being delayed to today, but we know that delay is not denial. Amen. All right. Amen. Is a message called Mountains and Miracles. Yeah. All right. And we use this opportunity to say hello to the guys on live stream. Right. God bless you guys. And say hi to the guys on, on YouTube and say hi to the guys who will be listening to the podcast as well. Amen. Hey. All right, you have to hit them in multiple angles. Amen? Yes. Amen. Soon we're going to be Facebook and live. Anyone Facebook and live right now? Is that a word I just made out? Facebook and live. Is that a word? Is that all right? Is that right terminology? Facebook and live. 
Well, in a liberal society that we live in now, guess what? Anything goes. All right, so Facebook in live. I just made it up, guys, all right? Hashtag that, amen. Trademark it, amen. So I guess, for me, I, I, God drops something in my spirit about mountains and miracles, and I say to myself, you know what? I believe it's a word that God just doesn't just want just for me, but I believe it's a word for this house, for people who are watching, and just for anybody, all right? Last week, um, I celebrated 30-something years on earth, <laughs> all right, all right. Do you know what? It's young man. Young man. Because thirties is the new twenties. Yes. All right. And it gave me an opportunity to kind of look back on my life. Every birthday, rather than doing a big ura all that kind of stuff. I mean, I don't really do birthday dinners and that kind of. Stuff. I'm not really into that kind of thing. I like to reflect. I like to sit. I like to be by myself. Trust me, when you get to, some of you young guys, man, you guys, you, want, you guys want to turn up, you guys want to do all that kind of great, crazy stuff. When you get to my age, you look at your body, you, okay, everything's, everything's still working. Thank you, Jesus. That's, that's a birthday present. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. The heart is beating properly. All right. Food is going down and it's, and it's, yeah. it's always, do you understand what I'm saying to you? That is good. Yes. So for me, I like just to reflect and see, okay, what has been the journey? Yeah. What has happened? What has been the sum total of my life thus far? And I realized that my life has been a, a combination of mountains yeah. <laughs> and miracles. All right. Literally, that's what it was. Mountains and miracles. And, and even for us as a church over the past five years, has been mountains and miracles. For some of us even now that we've, 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 we've utilized the first six months of the year, you know, the year of takeoff, clear for takeoff. But along the way, it's been mountains and miracles. So if you allow me today, guys, for the next 35 minutes or so, I want to talk to you about mountains and miracles. Tell your neighbor, let's learn about mountains and miracles. Come on, drag them, shake them, make sure they're alive. Come on, man. Come on, you're allowed to do that. You won't get sued for that, man. We've got good lawyers, man. They're good. Some of you right now, you've got mountains, but you don't even know it. You're blaming the devil, you're blaming everything else. You say it's a habit, but let me tell you, it's a mountain. Anything that stops you from being what God has called you to be, it is a mountain. And you have to deal with your mountains. And some of you are praying, God, move the mountains. And God will move mountains, but some mountains, you have to surmount them. You have to, you have to get to the apex of that mountain and then see what God got for you next. Because let me tell you something, as crazy as mountains are, they're not always bad things. Yeah. They're places of learning. But let's talk about mountains first of all. Let's talk about mountains. Amen? Amen. Amen. First of all, mountains are mentioned so many times in the Bible. So many times. And not because uh, the Bible writers are trying to get overly deep, even though mountains signify some deep things in the Bible, which we should come to in a moment. But it's mainly because the, 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 the Bible region was full of mountains. So a lot of times when the Bible writers or when even Jesus telling the story, it will use mountains. Because why? Because they were all around. Just like nowadays when we talk about uh, biblical or spiritual things, we will use things like Facebook and Instagram. They're not, they're not, unri- they're not unrighteous stuff, just that that's what's around us. You know, I'm going to quote you a Drake lyric. Lyric, so lyric, I don't know. But not because I like Drake. I mean, he's from Canada. Oh, sorry, bro. <laughs> All right. He's from the lesser America. Oh. But more friendly, more friendly, more welcoming. They're not doing too shabby. You guys, you guys have a nice prime minister. They're not doing too bad. But it's cold up in that place, right? There's no beaches in Canada, right? No. Damien, is there any beaches in Canada? Like real beaches, like with, like where you have to wear sunscreen and stuff. Really? In Canada? Whereabouts? And to- that sounds cold. Vancouver. That's a beach. In Vancouver. Anywho. Mountains and hills are, me- are mentioned over 500 times in the Bible. Mountains have a logical religious symbolism for biblical culture. Because for them, it, it-, it sensed that you were close to God because it was higher up. Ooh, yeah. 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 
All right? It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was higher up. Okay? All right? And oftentimes, as a result, God actually reveals himself on mountaintops. God often reveals himself on mountaintops. So as crazy, as hard, as, uh, as, as, uh, you know, as, as difficult as to, 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 to look at mountains. But I've realized that it is in the place of your greatest opposition that God speaks to you the most. Most of us, when we're in the midst of our miracles, we can't really hear from God. Because we're so busy enjoying the miracle. Come on, man. Come on, I've conducted weddings where I'm preaching sermons, I'm trying to bless the couple on the wedding day, and they, they want me to get it over and done with. Because they've, they've got a miracle now, and they wait for their wedding night. So the preacher is just an opposite. I've now become the mountain in their life. <laughs> All of a sudden, I now, now I know why people sing Travis Green songs in a wedding. God, you move mountains, and you perform miracles. Get this preacher out of the way. Amen. <laughs> mountains like Mount Oreb is where Moses was commissioned. That's where the, the, the burning bush experience happened. It took a mountain for God to get Moses' attention. Because let me tell you something. Before that time, Moses was not about that life. You guys understand what I'm saying to you? So God had to show up. It was in Mount Sinai that, that God gave Moses the, the commandments. He gave him instructions. And I don't know how many of you right now, you've got some mountains in your life, but God's trying to use the mountains to give you instructions. Instructions. On the mountaintop. Just maybe the place of your greatest victories is going to be... I know we want the mountain to move, but just don't, don't be premature with it. Can you be patient enough to let God have his way with you even in the midst of your mountain? A lot of us, even, even when we come to dark places in our life, we're trying to say, God, get me out of it. But do you know that, you de- do you know that things develop in dark places? Do, 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 you, do you know it? See, it's a thing. I'm concerned about Christians. Because we say the right things because it sounds right. Some of our prayers are ungodly. I could imagine God just laughing at us, man. Oh, God, move this mountain. God said, my, my, my. If only you knew what I want to do for you in the mountain. Because all things work together for your good. This morning I was driving to church. My wife asked me this morning, we're just talking. And, um, um, and um, she, 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 we're asking the question that what if my father and mother had stayed together and didn't get divorced when I was three years old? Wow. What would have happened? Um, and she followed that question up with, you know, as a child, would I, would I, have, would I have chosen to have my father around mm. and miss out on this life? Mm. As a child, you probably say yes, right? Because you just want your father around. But you will miss out. But as an adult, I said, no. I would give up my father to have this life. Yes. Yes. Because if I if I stay, if my mother and father were still together, I would have no reason to emigrate from Nigeria. My father was well off. Well, supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> God is good. I'm trying to get him saved, so he might be watching live stream. So, hallelujah. Daddy, love you. Amen. Mm. But you missed my birthday. Anyway. <coughs> no shade, no shade. But, but check this out. She asked me this question, and I, and I was like, as a child, I would have probably chosen to have my father around because I was thinking like a child. You know, I far saw what was, was, was limited by my childishness. By, yeah, by my neediness, not by my purpose. If they stayed together, I wouldn't be here. 
I won't be married to my wife. I won't have my children. I'll be in Nigeria so I'm getting bitten by a mosquito. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying to you? I'll be live streaming like the TRC thinking, oh, there might not be a church, there won't be a TRC, but I'll be live streaming thinking, God, 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 if only you can give me a passport to get to that church. Amen. All things work together. The mountains, the obstacles, the barriers, they work for your good, man. Rejection is redirection. Some of you are still crying over your rejection. You have to be happy that you were rejected. I've told you guys so many times, do you know how many ladies rejected me when I was growing up? But look what the Lord has done. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you, sometimes you cry over things that you should be shouting about. Cry too much. Much of Jesus' ministry took place on mountains. In fact, the, the, the now infamous Sermon on the Mount. As the name entails, it was on a mountain. <laughs> the greatest gift that God gave to us as humanity happened on a mountain. A place called the Hill of Golgotha, yes. also known as Calvary. Yes. On a mountain, on a Friday. Yes. You understand what I'm saying to you? Yes. Exactly. Yes. So that everything can flow down. Yes. Jesus' transfiguration happened on the mountain. Yes. Now, I know you don't like mountains. It looks bad. But let's get, a great, let's get a better understanding of mountains. I know you have mountains in your life, but come on. When you understand the season you're in, you will realize that it was for your good. Amen. See, I, I, I love some of the guys that they, they've been around me so long and so much that they can finish my, my, like my, my words, my sentences for me. Amen. 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 All right. So... In, in Zechariah, no, we, we, we haven't really preached so much from Zechariah. We, we, we can preach a lot from, from New Testament, but like, there were so many scriptures in the Bible that talk about mountains, but I had to look at Zechariah and how it deals with Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was commissioned to rebuild the temple. He was the first one to come out of, when the Israelites came out of Babylon, they came out to now rebuild the temple. He was also in charge of bringing back the gold and the silver that, that King Nebuchadnezzar stole and took away. He brought it back. Yeah. So in essence, Zerubbabel was, a, what was, was almost like a foreshadow of Jesus. Yeah. He rebuilt the temple and he brought all things back. He compensated. He brought a compensation. And while he was building the temple, guess what? The Samaritans were trying to stop it. They were trying to block it. In fact, check this out. Check this out. I'll put a little note that I put together. It says, the Samaritans disrupted the building project. And this is another reason why the Jews oh, the hate the Samaritans. Mm. Which now gives more power to the, old, to the old story of the good Samaritan yeah. Yeah. and the woman of the well. Yeah. <laughs> because the woman said to Jesus, for you Jews have nothing, no dealings with us Samaritans. Yeah. Because Why? Because back in the day, they were trying to stop the building process. You guys are with me? Hmm. Eight to the men. Zerubbabel. Mountains. One other thing that I've come to realize about mountains is that mountains are places of sacrifice. That's how we don't. That's another reason we don't like them. Because oftentimes God will get you, will get the mountains to be using your life for you to stop taking inventory in your life and sacrifice some things. And get rid of some things. If he gave it a miracle too quickly, you don't think you need to get rid of anything. You think that you can bring all your mess, all your junk with you into your promised land. You can't. There's some people you've got to leave behind. 
There's some habits and some lifestyles. Oh, you love them. You want them. Ooh. But you got to. You got you to you gotta, you gotta leave them behind. In Genesis 22, 14. Abraham. On the mountain. He saw God's hands. And provision and miracles like yeah. never before, man. Yeah. God told him, you know, you have to, you have to sacrifice your only son. Yeah. Yeah. The son that was a miracle. The son that was a, was the miracle. But God's saying that if you can give up. This miracle, I will show you a greater miracle. Some of you, you're tight-fisted. You got the job, you're blessed, but you don't tithe, you're not generous. You don't bless other people. You've, you, you, you've got a car, but you won't give no one a lift. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? God's promoted in your job, but you won't, give, you won't open the door for someone else to get a job in your workplace, even though you're in charge of HR. Come on, somebody. God's saying, can you give, can you trust me with that miracle that I gave to you for something even greater? Abraham says, Lord, I'm, I'm ready for this, man. He put his son on the mountain to sacrifice his son. But it was on the mountain that he saw God's hand. God was hiding the provision behind bushes on the mountain. No wonder Abram said to the servants, you stay down there, me and this boy, we will go yonder. Because let me tell you something. First of all, not a lot of people want to go with you to the mountain anyway. But there's some people who want to go with you to the mountain because they, they love you, they're loyal to you. But sometimes loyalty will destroy you. Because I can imagine, and this, I'm just adding my flavor to this now. I can imagine if the servants, because they are servants, if they went to the mountain with Abraham and the son, all right, they would have talked him out of. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And from studying the Bible, just remember this. Just remember this. Just remember this. Abraham's son, he wasn't a child anymore. He was an elderly teenager. He was like 19. He was stronger than. Than, than, than his father. Yeah. He, could, he could handle his father. Yeah. So I know we're saying that Abraham was a man of great faith, but come on, it's Isaac too. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. How many of you grown folks? We just lie there. <laughs> Daddy's got a knife in his hand. You're an altar. Because come on, you know what the altar meant. You know what it meant. It's for sac- you, come on, man. You knew the mountaintop was a place of sacrifice. It's part of your teaching in the Jewish culture. You knew that. And you're not lying there naked. That is going knife. And you just lie there. Hmm. I've already asked daddy where's the sacrifice where's the lamb and daddy says the Lord will provide <laughs> oh wow oh wow okay so I'm lying there now naked and daddy's got a knife the ser- and the servants would have been the same age as Isaac so they would have been, they would, they would have been, ro- even though they were servants, they would have been boys, they would have been rolling together, and they don't want their boy to die. Because check this out, Abraham was already old, he was going to die soon, all right? So their, their, their employment was dependent on Isaac staying alive. That's why they had to stay down. Because they would have man-handled Abraham. They would have knocked Abraham. The story wouldn't be like, they would have knocked Abraham out. They, they would have made Abraham the sacrifice. <laughs> Old man, let's go. 
But some people can't go with you to the mountaintop, man. I know some of you guys got prayer warriors, you got intercessors that want to, that want, they, you know, they, they love you, they want to go. There's some place that even the intercessors can't go with you to. God's going to deal with you by yourself on the mountain. And just say no to all our intercessors. To Guys, I, ooh, ooh, I pray for people. But there's some people, I say, you know what? You have to work this out with God. Because this is not about deliverance anymore. Yeah. This is about God needing you to sacrifice something. Yeah. And I can't sacrifice it for you. I can't surrender for you. Jesus surrendered for all of us, but now we have to now surrender. That's what the Bible says. Present yourself as a living sacrifice. God is trying to, try to kill you, but trying to kill it in you. Oh, you didn't, you didn't get that. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. That's why it tells you, Romans, that present yourself as a living sacrifice. It's not you that's God trying to kill. It's the it in you, and we all have the it. And sometimes God has to have you in a tight place, in a mountain experience, so that it would die. And some of you got to to throw the it from the mountaintop so you can hit the ground so it won't survive. Some of you try to be on level ground, trying to throw the it on the floor. It just gets back up again and just yeah. comes and bites you. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to throw it from the highest mountain yeah. so that it cannot survive. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying to you? <sighs> Jacob also made a sacrifice on the mountain. You can check this out in, in, in Genesis 31, 54. See, sacrifice is about obedience. It's about cost. It's about trust. Your sacrifice, whatever it might be, must be predicated by your obedience. If you make a sacrifice not based on obedience to God's word, you just murdered something, not sacrificed it. All right? A sacrifice must be something that's predicated by God's word. Otherwise, it might just be your own wishful thinking. It might just be your own good idea. Doing something good, but not, not, not based on God's word, is not good enough. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? You know, there's this, um, I think it was, uh, uh, is it uh, Pastor Bever? Yeah. Um, uh, good and, so what's that again? Good or God. Because a lot of people do good things. But they're, they're not really sacrificial. They're not really in, in accordance to God's word. Sacrifice must be predicated by obedience. But you also have to know this, that sacrifice is going to cost you something. And the problem is a lot of us, we don't want to pay the price. How many of you guys ever climbed a mountain before? A real mountain, a real mountain, okay. Something that's thousands of feet up in the sky. Snow, snow. Okay, good stuff. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Some people think that you know Alexandra Palace, you know they they all they they think that's a mountain. That's a hill, man. Ali Pali, that is not a mountain. Amen. So what's that? It can pass. No, it can't pass. You can, you, can, you, can, you can catch a bus there. You can use you can use your oyster to get there. No, I tell my things that you have to trek for days. Yeah, that like real. Where, 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 where have you been? What mountain? The one in, in Asia, like where the real mountains are. Yeah, yeah. Kilimanjaro, those kind of places. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else, sir? Where, where is that? I can't. Hear. Guys in the front, shush. Oh, where, where? Yeah. Oh, gangster. Come on, somebody. Anyone else? Where's that? I, I couldn't hear anything. This is your staircase. That's a mountain. No, that's a mountain sometimes, man. When your legs are, when your tired. And that's one of our connect group leaders, eh, man? <laughs> oh, man. But, guys, mount. It's going to cost you something to go on a mountain journey. Maybe that's why I've never done it. Because I see people come, like, the, when they're about to go up, they're very excited. Yeah. When they come 
They're smiling. The first few thousands of feet, like, they're taking pictures. Then you don't hear from them for days. Then when they, when they come down, their hair is all white. Gray hair. They, they look like they just, just, I don't know, just grab a grave or something. Man. They look battered. But a mountain would do something like that to you, man. A mountain changes you because when, when Moses came back from the mountain, he was different. Because it cost him something. It took everything that he was. It took it off of him. And the reason why a lot of us, we don't want to. We don't want to because it's going to, we're going to be unrecognizable. But you know this is what it means to be born again? That part of you die, you die to self. Yeah. And then you become a new creation. Yeah. A little disclaimer right now. I know we are all born again. We all believe. I believe we are. Some of us might not be yet. Um, but I believe a uh, majority of us are in this room. But we all know that this all born again experience that we have to do it every single day. Yeah. 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 Die to self daily. Oh, yeah. Daily. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So just maybe rather than running away from mountains. Run towards them. We should just run to the mountain. So that God can have his perfect way with us. Yes. So that we become unrecognizable. Oh, yes. 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 Just. Yes. Maybe. And I think the reason why a lot of us, we're still caught up in self, we're caught up in pride. Because you know that there can be some, there's, there's something called Christian pride? Yeah. Mm. The worst. Which is the worst, man? Yeah. Like, you use biblical connotations mm. to justify Go choose my words carefully now. That sounds that sounds proper English. Your behaviors and your attitudes. I was thinking some other words, which I was trying to I was trying to filter. No, but that'll be too dangerous. I might get sacked. <laughs> All right. There's too much of us in this. There are some people, they're Christians, they're very biblically sound, but the Bible makes no sound in them. I don't know where that one came from. Like, I don't know, I don't know where that one came from. Empty! I think you guys got you got, you got to tweet that as copyright to me. I God just gave it to me right now. Oh, it's Bishop Jakes. He didn't come up with that. No one came up with that. Oh. I can't remember what it was. What did I just say? Some people are biblically sound. Yeah. Well, but the Bible makes no sound in them. Oh! oh. oh. Shun to the door indeed. Amen. Amen. And you can't sacrifice without trust. Abraham had to trust God. He had to trust without a shadow of a doubt. When God calls you to your mountain and he, he refuses to move that mountain, you have to trust him. This week I watched that film, The Shack. My, my, my. Oh, my, my, my. Many years ago, someone brought me the book. Like, when I first started pastoring, um, people decided that the best gifts to give to me were Bibles and Christian books. I was grateful. I was really grateful. But I've got every translation of the Bible. And to buy me another Bible, I- I'm grateful. Really, I'm grateful. But I would rather have a season ticket no, no, not to Arsenal, not to Arsenal. I'm not into that football. Basketball. Like, you know, and flights every weekend That's a very expensive to Oakland so I can watch Golden State and then fly me to the East Coast to watch Boston Celtics. I w- that, w- that would be the perfect gift. Soon come, soon come. Soon come. Wait, but make sure you're back on Sunday. I, w- I will be back on Sunday. Oh, I will be back on Sunday. I promise we can sign a contract. I'll be back on Sunday. Or I can stream to you. No, no. But you, got, you have to trust God. 
You've got to trust him. Some of my most epic trust of faith moments have been on mountaintops. When I didn't know where the money was coming from next. When the doctors were saying things. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? When I looked all around, I couldn't find help anywhere. The people who wanted to help me, they, they were low, they were beautiful, but they didn't have the resource. So sometimes there are people that want to help you, but you know they don't have the resource. They have the intention. They have the goodwill, but they don't have the resource. So I looked around and said, God, where is my help? Mm -hmm. Then Zechariah chapter 4 comes into mind. That the mountains that oppose me, they will be leveled. Yes. Oh! Yes. Look, 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 check, check this out, check this out. I'm going, I'm going to jump to Psalm 95, 3 and 4. Oh. Psalm 95, 3 and 4. Oh. NLT version says this. For the Lord is a great, great God. Yes. All right? So greater than the great mountain. Yes. Remember, remember Zechariah, um, he, asked that, that, um, that, he asked that question. Who are you, O oh, great and mighty mountain? Yeah. Check this out. For the Lord is a great God, greater than the mountains. Yeah. A great king above all gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. So rather than you crying about your mountains, run to the hands of God who holds the mountains in his hand. That means he can, he can, he can do as he wills. Check this out, check this out, check this out, check this out. Check this out. Check this out. In Mark eleven twenty three, 23, it says, Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, and see, your mountain could be anything. It could be a health situation, it could be a financial situation, it could be spiritual, it could be an emotional. It could be a rejection, it could be a hurt. But you say, I tell you, if anyone. It didn't say the ones who got it all together. The ones who read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. The ones who can speak in tongues. Let me, speak in tongues is good. I encourage it. But it says, just like it says, if anyone be in Christ. That's why I love the Bible. Because I'm counting in that anyone. Flawed and all. Messed up and all. Broken but chosen. If anyone says to this mountain, go. This is command. Go. Throw yourself into the sea. And does not doubt in his in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. As a church, we 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 are in the midst of miracles, but we also have some mountains that we gotta navigate real soon. But we also believe that on the other side of our mountains is our greatest miracles. That's what we believe. Sometimes God will move the mountains, but sometimes he wants you to surmount the mountain. He wants you to take, he wants you to subdue, just like he said to, to Adam in, in, in Genesis. To subdue, dominate. See, a lot of times, and I was talking about the shackle around to you guys, and some of the things that, that stood out to me in there was that um, the father, without me spoiling for you, um, the father was asking a lot of questions when he met with God. And please don't be thrown away in the, the fact that you know, God is depicted as a woman. All right? Don't, don't be thrown off by that. Don't, don't be thrown off by that. You know, see, in life, I've, I've, I've noticed in life that you can do great things. And there's some people that all they will see. You come to a church, people say it's great, it's wonderful. People are getting fed, people are growing. And one person will say, well, the service is too long. Or they want is my money. Oh, they're funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but I've realized this, guys. The higher God elevates you, the more you have to expect those noises 
to come your way. All right? To come your way. And as God elevates you, you're going to get more doubters around you. And the thing is, it's all right to have doubters around you as long as you don't doubt in your heart. That's what it says there. As long as you do not doubt in your heart. It doesn't matter what your haters and what the trolls, what they say about you. It's about... Anyway. This is nothing being possible. Travis Green says, you know, with God, you move mountains. You cause wars to fall. You perform miracles. If you trust God for miracles, you have to trust him that he can also move the mountains. If you trust that God raised Jesus from the dead, if you trust, see, one thing that really upsets me about believers is this, that we choose what to trust in yeah. God about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I believe that Jesus raised, raised, raised Lazarus. I wasn't there, but I believe it. But I don't trust Jesus enough to raise me out of debt, out of, uh, out of this horrible relationship. Uh, out of the situation. I don't trust him in that. I'd rather read the stories of what God did than, than rather than being the story of what God is doing. And I believe God is looking for some people that he can take to mountains. And in the midst of the mountains, they won't give up on him. They will trust him through the mountains while they wait for their miracles. In the Old Testament, miracles are known as signs and wonders. But do you know that God wants to use you as a sign and a wonder? Because miracles, see, some of us, we get it wrong. We think that miracles is just when we have everything that we need and everything's okay. No, you've got it wrong. I've researched, I've read the Bible, I've studied this, guys. Miracles are meant to point people to God. Oh, you've got it wrong. The reason why we've got it wrong is because there's too much self in us still. God, miracles is only, it's only when I just come out. But sometimes God will bring you out for the scenic view so that other people will see you coming out. Oh. He will do it. That's what the psalm says. Like, God, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Because God doesn't want to bless you privately. He wants your haters, your opposition, those who are trying to kill you, he wants them around. So that when he does it, everything points to him. But you want him to do it quickly. God said, I need more crowd to come. Don't believe me, ask Lazarus. He had to be dead, dead. So that more people can gather. So that when he came walking out of that tomb. Woo! Some of you, you haven't got enough opposition yet for you to be blessed. You haven't got enough haters yet for you to be blessed. No, 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 no. You haven't got enough people trolling you yet for you to be blessed. You got that one hater? One? 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 And you want God to do, to do it suddenly right now because of one? God said, I need a thousand. I need a thousand mountains in your life. I need a thousand opposition. I need a thousand people telling you you can't do it. I need a thousand people telling you that, mm-mm, give up now. I need a thousand people saying that, uh-uh, it's over. That you should just quit right now. Then and only then I will do it suddenly. Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that suddenly. But you know that it took 50 days. And for everybody to be gathered in one accord. See, God suddenly takes a long time to come together. (laughs) It takes a long time to come together. Maybe you're not broken enough here for God to do the miracle. You're not broken enough yet. You're not broken enough yet. You're not despised. You haven't been rejected enough yet 
for God to bring you to your promise. You haven't been in the pit long enough. You were in the pit for 24 hours and you're complaining. God said, I'm going to put in the pit for 40 days. Then I'll show up. And God said, I'm bringing somebody out. I'm bringing them through. But all they keep asking me is, is God, take them out. God says, God says, I want to take you through. No, God, take me out. No, it's better. It's more profitable that I take you through. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou are with me. I know some of you guys right now, you're on mountains and it's scary, but you got to trust that God is with you. Jehovah Jireh, most of us, we, 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 we read it as God my provider. But in the original Hebrew, it doesn't mean provider. It means God will seize me. Because if he sees you, he will provide for you. If he sees you, he will bring healing to you. If he sees you, he will bring you through. Rather than praying, God, take me out, I say, God, see me. I'm on the mountain. I want you to, be, to see me and to be present with me. Because if you see me, that's why in the book, in the book of Zechariah, what did we read there? You talk about, it says, the Lord's seven eyes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That sees throughout yes. the earth. Yes. As long as you can be secured in the fact that God sees you, Come on. you will stop worrying on how long it's taken. You will stop worrying about how, how intensified the, 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 the fire is. The same scripture says that the capstone, which is the, the top of the mountain, that is so you would take the capstone. Wow. Just, like, just like David cut off Goliath's head, you would take the head of your position. And that would be in your hands. So that you would go out there, you will live out your testimony. And you will show the world, look what God has done. Trust me on the journey. Trust the process. Before I take you into your miracle, I must walk you through the mountain. But I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Recently, I got stuck on my book project. So I stopped writing. Then got to me for a journey. <laughs> now I got materials. <laughs> do, do, you guys, do you guys know that... <laughs> God will take you through some stuff so you have materials. So you have something to write about and to sing about, to shout about, and to tweet about. So rather than you retweeting other people's tweets, you have your own tweets now. Because you've gone through some stuff. So I've come to realize, man, well, Paul says, when I was a child, I fought and reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I come to realize now this, that mountains, thank you. Thank you. You push me higher to God. Because on the mountaintops, I'm closer to God. I get my next move from God. I get my divine strategies from God. I get my commandments and my assignments from God. But it's also the place where I have to sacrifice some stuff in the flesh. But it's also the place where I can see miracles. So mountains, there's no distractions on mountaintops. God's got your attention. Hmm. God is so good, amen. Come on, how many people are going to join with me today to embrace miracles and mountains? Let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. And as a church... So family, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, hopefully, hoping that you've been blessed by today's message. Open that through the, uh, what we read in the book of Zechariah and what we read in the New Testament that you've been able to just get a glimpse of what mountains are for. Mountains, yes, we pray against them. We pray that God moves those mountains. But at the same time, we know that God can do amazing miracles right there on top of the mountain. 
So guys, I'm praying that whatever mountains you're dealing with in your life, that you get the right eyes, the right lenses to look at your mountains through and see God perform the most amazing things in your life as God does his miracles. God bless you guys. And please lean in, subscribe to the channel, share it, uh, download that app. Um, come on, if you're in London, London area, come and check us out on a Sunday. We're in the cinema in Canary Wharf and we're just open to see you and we're open to see God doing the miracles in your life and you can point the world to him because that's what miracles are there for so that we can point to God. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. We love you. God bless you.